Hey guys, this video is for the uh, E46 oil pan gasket replacement. It's not going to be a full how-to, but just a few tips um, that I've learned as I'm pretty much in the middle of doing it. If you want the full thing, uh, there's some really good videos out there by uh, 50s Kids, 50s Kid, and Hans Garage. Um, they'll walk you through every single step. I'll just tell you a few things that I've learned as I've done it. And I, I have basically kind of gone through, uh, well, those two videos for sure, uh, and have done more of the 50s kid style uh, when it came to the steering, but I'll get to that in a minute. Up top here, what you're going to have to uh, remove is the power steering pump. It's down below the alternator. Uh, you just need to take it off of the engine and let it hang. Um, that's it right here. That's the guy, okay? Uh, when it comes to the rest of this, some of the videos, and I don't remember which ones, they, they're gonna tell you, you you've gotta take all the, the ducting off, you gotta take the, the DISA valve off, uh, which this is your DISA. Uh, I didn't have to do all that, and I'm not sure why you would, um, unless the cars are different, but I just took off the air box and then that uh, intermediate pipe here. Uh, you gotta peel uh, this tube off and however the other tube is it doesn't matter you, you'll figure that part out and then what you're really after is down here uh, that that mess right down there is the oh yeah, well, there you go you can see it loose <clears throat> that's the bracket that holds the dipstick tube into the oil pan which is way down there I don't know if you can see that actually if you can see that braided hose there that goes into the oil dipstick tube and that goes down into the oil pan and that's one of the things that uh, you, you definitely got to take that off uh, and so in the bottom of that or I guess where that dipstick tube goes down to the oil pan there's an o-ring that seals the tube to the pan when you take the tube out uh, which I did by just dropping the pan I didn't actually pull the tube out all right the reason why I didn't take the dipstick tube all the way off is because this braided looking rubber hose thing down here okay this guy this hose goes up to the bottom of your CCV PCV valve okay <clears throat> and it slides on to this the metal part of the dipstick tube down there quite a bit uh, I tried to peel it off a little bit it wasn't coming and I didn't want to I didn't want to break it uh, where it attaches to the CCV, so I just left it and then slid it out of the pan as uh, I got ready to drop the pan. Okay, so that's how I did that. So that's all you really had to take off um, on this side of the engine. Up here, uh, clearly, you know, you're going to have to take the belt off. Uh, this is your tensioner right here. To take that off, you're going to have to take the fan off, which is a... A reverse thread type of a deal which for me uh, so I, I don't know if it's exactly a 32 millimeter but I uh, just got a, a wrench set at Harbor Freight 32 millimeter wrench is what fits on here and again you're gonna have to go this way with it to loosen it and if it hasn't been off before you may have a little trouble with it what I did was took a, a screwdriver slid it under like this bolt head here and wedge the other part of the screwdriver on top of this pulley so that this would not keep turning this direction when I was trying to loosen the big uh, fan nut. Here's the fan. There's the nut that spins onto the front of the, uh, I believe that's the water pump pulley. And it just goes like so. No rocket science here. Once you get it broke loose from from that uh, threaded shaft there, you can just take a hold of the fan and just spin the fan by the fan blades, and it'll usually come right off, which is what I did. Uh, and of course, that the fan shroud, and it's got some wiring that you're going to have to undo over here. It's got a, a Torx uh, screw that goes into this this deal right here. Uh, none, none of this is hard. I'm just telling you. Okay, under here is where things get tricky, of course. Uh, there's a lot going on. 
there's that's the motor mount over there that I've got center frame on the passenger side uh, the one over here on the driver's side is not there right now uh, that's where it should sit and I'll tell you why in a second um, actually I'll, I'll just show you I'll, I'll put a still frame up the old versus the new it basically fell apart when I dropped the sub frame um, oh on the top before you do anything down here you're gonna you're gonna have to take uh, the motor mounts loose from from the top side okay right here right there where okay right here this stud uh, there's a nut that nut you can take off from the top of the engine or from the top side of the engine it's a 16 millimeter nut you're gonna want to loosen that one and the one over here before you do anything else down here on the bottom okay um, make sure you loosen that up or when you go to jack up the motor uh, with that with that engine support bar right there uh, you're gonna wind up pulling against the engine mounts and you don't want that uh, the, the rest of this like you can follow the other guides it's gonna get you pretty well where you need to be um, I did want to show you I ended up on the steering rack let me get to the other side the steering rack I ended up doing the 50s kid way and not the Hans garage way and I'll show you why actually before that I totally skipped it this is the engine support bar I got from Harbor Freight for like 60 bucks uh, it works just fine it's perfect you don't even need the chains that come with it on this engine you just hook that down through the uh, engine lifting point here and then uh, just give her a squeeze with that and then it'll you can actually lift the engine up with this uh, once you've taken the the motor mount nuts off of each side and that's one of those nuts right there nothing special 16 mil guy so there's two different ways you can deal with the steering to get enough clearance to drop this subframe and uh, of course I'm right under the oil pan <clears throat> looking forward so here's your, your steering rack right and then here is what comes out of the steering column it is a lot easier just to take out this I think it's an E10 Torx bolt just take it out and then this shaft will just slide right out as you're lowering this entire uh, subframe down okay and then uh, you know I just put a, a blotch of paint on there uh, and this is the this is the, still the way that the bolt head was oriented so I know this this hasn't turned at all I don't even know if you can turn it by hand just don't turn your steering column make sure that's locked uh, but that that was really easy to come undone and then you don't have to worry about taking the um, you don't have to worry about taking this whole rack and pinion loose from the subframe and messing up your alignment and so on and so forth uh, the oil pan itself so 50s kit does a great job actually they both do Han 2 of um, talking you through getting getting the pan off and all that stuff uh, it's quite a deal the hardest part is you know back here you got plenty of room to drop it down like there's nothing between this pan and my chest right now but up here on the front side even though it looks like you got tons of room uh, and you kind of do as you start to drop it and you can see these these power steering hoses are in the way and then the transmission actually scratch that those are the transmission lines that go to the transmission cooler uh, right up well you can't really see it from here but right up here on the left side as you begin to drop this these are going to interfere with these lines which is no big deal you can kind of push those around but this hump in the oil pan right here that is to clear the oil pump um, sprocket and you've got to drop it way down to get down underneath that oil pump and it's a pain in the neck everything's going to fight you uh, and the reverse is true when you're going to put this pan back on um, I don't think I don't remember uh, if it was in one of the videos or if I read it or what but when I put this oil pan back on you're going to place the place the new gasket on top of the oil pan and then I took in four spots through the through the bolt holes here with the gasket I just took some real small zip ties and zip tied the the gasket to the pan two in the front corners and basically two in the back corners uh, because when you're sliding this thing back in 
it's a devil, you know, to get it, <laughs> to get the pan where it needs to be without the gasket sliding off. So that's what I did there. Um, here's what's left of the old oil pan gasket. Uh, a lot of this broke off when I was trying to take the thing off, but I feel like some of that was missing already because <laughs> I didn't even see the parts in the oil pan. Uh, here is the driver's side engine mount. Uh, that just like I said basically fell apart on me when I took it off the frame And if you don't know these are filled with oil um, So I had oil leaking all over and I thought something I wasn't sure I thought something else had broken uh, And was leaking oil on me and it, it wasn't it was just the, the motor mount So I'm replacing it with the the euro brand that I got from rock auto uh, I don't know if I said that these were about um, 26 or 27 dollars. I got the Felpro oil pan gasket, which was about the same price. And <clears throat> I'm just going to replace both motor mounts. And then here's uh, clearly the new one versus the old. Uh, you can see the old ones are it's squished down quite a bit, probably because all the juice is out of it. And. I think that's about all that I wanted to pass on. Uh, don't tighten your oil pan bolts down too much. There's a lot of them. There's like 30 so they can spread the weight out and, uh, and produce a good seal without you having to tighten any one down very much because you don't want to break them off inside the block and have to drill it out and so on and so forth. Okay, here I've got the, uh, pretty much everything's done on the other underside. Got the subframe all back up, connected and control arms and uh, this, I guess, subframe support. This is the, the different style, I guess the later style, other than what like 50s kid had on his, which looked like the newer one. Um, I had my butt kicked trying to get the subframe back up and in place. And I don't know if I can really show you, but right there, that's one of the subframe bolts and then right up here there that other bolt center frame uh, so this is the driver's side here I had a lot of problems especially on the driver's side getting those to uh, line back up with the frame and get in place and it's because of in our center frame the motor mounts uh, on and this was an issue on both sides and once I figured out that get the motor mount in place first get that little there's a little nub that like an alignment nub and you can just see it past the the stud in the nut sticking down uh, through that hole there right behind that's a little silver piece and that's a that's an alignment nub yeah, right there pretty much in the center right below the stud uh, get that lined up then you can um, kind of get the the top stud lined up into the where that arm comes down off the motor and then you can raise up your, your subframe and try to get these bolts to get started. Uh, that was the problem I had on both sides was that I was raising the subframe and then the motor mount, the stud on top, was actually contacting the engine or whatever else and it was causing everything to get all, you know, crazy. And then once you get that done, then you can get those two bolts are right there uh, that hold the back of your control arms back on and then everything else kind of falls into place but that was definitely a lesson learned and here's one other thing i just went through the steering guibo jubo whatever you say uh, the coupler if after you put everything back together the car runs perfect uh, you get in it to back it out and you've got loosey-goosey steering it's probably because you did something wrong here. In my case, uh, this shaft here, I had not fully inserted down into the, the coupler, even though I had I had it in there and I had the bolt clamped around it. I mean, this thing was super loose and I saw that at the time, but I couldn't really figure out why. And I, I don't know if I was just, I don't know, I was tired. I was really tired by the time I got that to that part. And I did not see that the paint mark I had made here and here, like the paint mark was way up here 
on this shaft still. So clearly I did not have it all the way seated down in here. Uh, additionally, and I think on the 50s kid video it shows you, there's a little indent on this side of the shaft here where this bolt goes past it when you when you sink it down into the coupler properly. If you have the coupler um, not in there enough, you can still put this bolt in and clamp down just on the tip of this shaft and it will sort of stay in there, which is what I had, but your steering wheel is going to feel it's, it's not right. I took it around the block and immediately brought it home, uh, jacked it up the next day, which is today, and now I clearly saw what the problem was. Because then by the time you get that in there tight, you should be able to wiggle this and there should be no slop in this assembly at all. So if you want to see more details on it, watch that 50 kids, 50s kid video where when he raises the subframe, uh, he forgets to put that shaft in that coupler and then he takes the whole coupler off and then slides it up this shaft and then pushes it back down onto the the rack. Uh, I'm glad he included that in there um, because it really helped me see what might be the problem with mine. But um, I hope this helps you. Like I said, a little addendum to what the other guys have done a great job on. And good luck.